Hi, my name is John Downs and I'm the editor of both the Gonzo Daily blog and the weekly newsletter, which is rapidly becoming a magazine in its own right. I'm also working on a completely new project, a regular chat show podcast featuring Gonzo multimedia artists, which would be some sort of an adjunct to the Daily Blog and Weekly magazine. However, I haven't worked out how to do it yet, and being vaguely a perfectionist, I don't want to put it out until it's ready. However, I do think that it's time that we take a leaf out of the name of the company and add a multimedia aspect to the weekly magazine. So this week, there are a number of short interviews that I've done over the last fortnight. Rather than have my poor, long-suffering wife transcribe them, I'm uploading them to you as sound files. Let me know if you think this works. I've got no idea if it's going to or not, and will be guided by you, the Gonzo Weekly Readership, as to whether this is the direction with which I'm going to carry on or not. The possibilities are, however, endless, and I like the idea that I'll be able to include music and video clips, as well as interviews that can be accessed by readers of this magazine. So, as I said, let me know what you think. Over the last couple of weeks, the magazine has featured the work of the Dutch performance artist called René, who produces musical work under the name Mr Averill. Last week we posted an interview with him, and as a sort of adjunct to that interview, here's an excerpt from a conversation that I had a few days ago with Judge Smith. Who's Judge Smith, I hear you ask? Well, you should be ashamed of yourself. For those of you who have not heard of him, you should feel heartily ashamed of yourselves. He was not only one of the founder members of Van de Graaff Generator, but he's released a number of albums in his own right, including his genre of song stories, three of them so far, which have all been released through Gonzo and which are all bloody good. We will, no doubt, be returning to this subject very soon. But for today, he tells me about his working relationship and friendship with the man behind Mr Averill. We're really going to have to do... We really must talk about Rene. We've got to talk about Rene, because <coughs> basically I phoned up to talk about Rene. Yes. Why well, didn't I oh, phone up? Good to afternoon, start. Mr. Dan. I'm so good glad you could call. Good afternoon, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Rene. Yes. How did you first get involved with him? Um, it's, a, it's, again, through the uh, Van de Graaff generator nexus or network... I met him when I was performing in a uh, a big children's piece that I wrote with David Jackson uh, called um, The House That Cried. And we were performing it in Bracknell, where it had been commissioned, and I met him on that occasion. Um, and we sort of stayed in touch uh, ever since. He's a great character, I think. Very nice man. <laughs> so that's how I met René. Um, and he's sort of been uh, 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 in my dress book ever since and doing conversations and so on. Um, and uh, he played uh, tabla on Curly's airships. He... Um, He's a classically trained tabla player at quite a high level. He used to go every year and spend time in northern India with his tabla guru. Good Lord. And has passed various horrific sounding um, ordeals of tabla playing where you have to play for 24 hours without stopping and things like that um, to get your black belt or however they, however they do it. Um, and I, I needed some bursts of Indian music in Curly's airships. And he um, was uh, played often with a, a Dutch uh, sitar player, um, a European sitar player. Um, and, you know, I, it, it would not have been easy for me to find a sitar, uh, an Indian sitar player who would be willing to, you know, they're very serious about their their craft and the spiritual aspects of it so I was better off with a European who didn't mind being on a rock and roll album um, and a very very good sitar player and between them they put together um, Indian arrangements of my my tunes on Curly's airships they're only a, it's sort of two short 30 second bursts but that was recorded in um in Utrecht in Holland and in order to 
uh, at the studios of uh, uh, their music college. And in order to get the OK to do that, I did a lecture for the university. So I had to prepare a lecture, deliver a lecture, and in return I got the use of the studio. So <laughs> one of the many, many hoops I had to jump through to get Curly done. And uh, that this was... must have been back from 1998. Yeah, that's now. right. Yeah. There's a picture of them on the uh, in the uh, booklet, one of the booklets of Curly's airships, of uh, um, them sitting on their their mat playing. That is them, actually shot in the studio. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and so, I mean, that was great. He was really good. They did a wonderful job. I was so pleased with that. And then when I came to do an album called The Full English, um, which was essentially sort of an unplugged album, but there were some tracks where I definitely wanted some, some drums. But rather than do programming, uh, which I'm pretty good, but it just wasn't right to do drum programming on a thing like that. It needed somebody actually playing drums. <coughs> and I, you know, I can't, I'm no, no good anymore. I can't play. And I haven't got a drum kit, so... That's um, probably a slight... A slight snag, yes. Um, but Rene, in an earlier incarnation, had been a rock and roll drummer. And he hadn't played for years. But he volunteered to, uh, to play the drums on these tracks, which was very interesting. So I went over again to, to Holland, uh, where he had a studio, and he did... Uh, he did the drums and also a lot of bits of percussion and so on. Um, and it was <laughs> interesting because he hadn't played for so long. He played in a really period 60s beat group style, which is perfect. You know. That's wonderful. <laughs> so, Where did this album come out? I don't think I've heard it. Oh, the full English. Ah, no, well, it's not on Gonzo. Um, it's... It's on an Italian label called Labour of Love, run by a chap called Marco Olivotto, studio owner, and again, another one of the Italian Van de Graaff aficionados. They have this, um, I'm not sure if it's still active, but they, for, for, for quite a long time, there was a magnificent organisation called the Van de Graaff Generator and Peter Hamill Study Group, <laughs> which were very erudite um, uh, enthusiasts for that music, who would have seminars, lectures, uh, they sponsored publications, they sponsored gigs, and so on. And um, uh, so that's, that's uh, Marco. He's also a... a a good excellent bass player and uh so when was this 2000 and um, something anyway he put this thing out yes he didn't play on it he just put it out so this was when 2002 uh yes hold on this is called the full english uh, i'm pulling it off the shelf here uh 2005 2005 and um i did a uh as as a result of that, I did a gig in London on the same day that the Van Graaff had their reunion gig in the Albert Hall. I had a gig uh, in London at lunchtime, so I got a huge audience, <laughs> which was very nice. You crapped it, okay. Yeah, well, you know, I thought it was okay. I told Peter Hamill I was going to do it he didn't have any problems with it and it gave, him, gave the, the fan something to do at lunchtime so it was a big success the gig and Rene played drums on that he came over and played drums for me on that gig which was very nice and um, uh, yes uh, uh, and as a result of that I got commissioned to do a live show with a proper band in Italy um, 
and that was turned into a DVD um, live in Italy, as it was called, rather <laughs> predictably. So then, that's taken us up to about 2006. Oh, right, yes. Um, then we get up to, well, we get, we get up to Orpheus, shall we say. Yeah. Uh, and in Orpheus there's the... Uh, I wanted a, 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 metal, a black metal band. Um, really horrible, really noisy. Um, but I needed lyrics that could be heard. I needed the lyrics to actually, you know, carry across. And bless them, proper black metal vocalists, that's not part of their concern. No, they, 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 they all sound up the clue in their throat. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great fun, I, I enjoy it, but uh, it's not very good for communicating information, and this needed... That is such a polite and subtle way of putting it. <laughs> so, uh, but Rene, also in earlier incarnations, had done quite a lot of singing, and he's got a wonderful, wonderful Dutch accent when he sings. And uh, so he came along and knocked those lyrics off very, very... Uh, knocked those vocals off very easily. And uh, with great success, I think. And that was thrilled, last year. Thrilled to bits with it. You've heard yeah. that. Well, you've heard Orpheus. Orpheus, yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I think he makes a great job of those songs. I think just the Um So, when he asked me, would I, um, would I do something for his new album? Of course, I had said yes. Um, so he came over and we did, uh, well, I don't have the album yet. Um, oh, smashing. Yes, he, he's, he hasn't sent his freebies out yet. He's only done, you know, the, the, the review copies. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing it. And I've heard earlier mixes of it. But I, I'm on, I'm doing, you playing euphonium. And doing some vocals. Yeah, he's a clever, he's a very interesting chap. I think it's an extraordinary album. I think it's a wonderful record, and I'm looking forward to hearing what what he does next and where he goes next. Yeah, he's a very interesting character because he really does it like a performance artist. He he's he seems to be more of that world than a rock musician. Am I expressing myself? I know exactly what you mean. He comes at it like a visual artist. And, of course, he is a visual artist. He works... He would, does sort of sound sculptures and massive installations and so on uh, of, of, of uh, you know, loudspeakers and so on that, that do things. And he's, his performances are very, very, very theatrical. Judge and I have been talking on the phone for over a year now, and the trouble is, whenever we talk, we end up having such long rambling conversations that I was forced to use the edit button quite a lot this time. Not because there was anything that he said that he shouldn't have said, but because we talked about so many widely differing subjects, subjects that interested him and interested me, but I sincerely doubt are going to interest most of the people who listen to this. I sincerely doubt whether there's much of a market for a podcast consisting of two middle-aged men rambling on for hours about subjects as diverse as spiritualism, Scientology, politics, history, goldfish, and the early days of Van de Graaff Generator. In fact, now I say that, that's exactly the sort of thing that I'd probably want to listen to. But my days as a broadcaster are very early ones at the moment. We will be back talking to Judge Smith again very soon. And in the meantime, I'd like to remind you that Mr. Averill's album, Gridlock, is now out on Gonzo Multimedia, and here's a track called Break the Mirror, which features Judge Smith on Euphonium.
there's nobody home It's quiet and cold, there's nothing to do I think there's someone, there's someone in the kitchen My glass of beer is standing on the ground It's warm and half filled A mosquito flies around Break the mirror 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 And throw It Down The mosquito Drives me mad And there's no, no, no person to But I hear many noises And yet there's nothing to do You can hear, hear the silence And that's for sure In the kitchen has gone But now I hear Someone upstairs The noisy floor is cracking In the sleeping room And the mirror images Oh, won't go away Break the mirror Break the mirror Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of my first audio interview for Gonzo Weekly. Tell me what you think. I hope you liked it. Tell me if it worked. Tell me if it doesn't work. I will act on the majority decision. And that's a new one for me. I don't usually follow democracy. But until then, be seeing you. <laughs>